Welcome back everyone once again to another SnowRunner truck review. Today we're going to take a look at two new vehicles from the year 3 pass finale, North Carolina that is season 12. These are the highly anticipated vehicles which are the FEM 378T and also the MTB 8106 Rock Grinder. So before we start I ask that you please help support the channel by liking the video as always and subscribing to the channel as well. All right, so without wasting any more time, let's jump into this and check it out. Based off the Yamal B6M, the FEM 3780T breaks into the year 3 finale with a bang, sending shockwaves throughout the community with its sheer size, performance, and brute strength. This truck somewhat resembles its real life version, and its off-road prowess is quite impressive. Keeping the intro rather short on this one, I felt we needed to just jump into the review and look at its good and bad qualities. So with that being said, let's start out with the bad news first. Coming in at downside number one, weak articulation steering. During the FEM's tenure on the public test server, it's seen some upgrades to its articulation motor which has indeed helped turning especially upon striking terrain while off-roading. However, that small bump from 100,000 to 123,000 torque, it's a little shy of other trucks like the CAT 745C at 135,000 torque. I believe I still felt this in testing especially on stream, pulling heavy cargo in the wilds, or just striking terrain in general. Overall, being a very, very large articulated truck that is this heavy, you might have some issues which leads us right into downside at number two, vehicle size and maneuverability. It's very true that the FEM is a massive vehicle, and while this doesn't pose much of an issue on the newer year 3 maps, smaller routes and spaces in the maps of old might pose problems for this one. Then we have to add in that most folks will probably be towing a trailer as well, so hauling 8 slots of cargo is for sure an absolute blast, but managing that length of that combination and 2 hinge points I believe this could be challenging. Another thing I might add that I did notice when I was driving the FEM is it will seldomly throw its hitch trailer around when it's rolling out from a sharp turn to straight driving. This has actually upset my trailer a few times and others I've had some close calls. And lastly, we did not mention stability on this list in the downsides because by the numbers it's definitely a stable vehicle. However, due to its articulation having no roll or twist properties like the 745C, the cab and the truck frame can't independently operate to help balance one another when going over obstacles. This has been shown that sharp turns with weight in its bed have actually tipped the vehicle over. In my observations, articulated vehicles can somewhat get muscled around when hitting terrain. This is evident when your cab swings off to different directions when hitting bumpy areas. Now take that observation and add in a sharp turn. In some cases the terrain and the weak articulation steering doesn't allow the vehicle to correct back the center to save your tip, and this is where the vehicle will actually roll over with and without cargo. Unfortunately I've witnessed this similar event, but much more of a rare occurrence than the Azov Antarctic. So for this one, just be concerned with your balance at all times. Downside number 3 potential hang-ups. Simply put here, the front overhang can be a place to get hung up on a truck that is mostly front heavy, but not by a whole lot. However, just from being a tad front heavy, this may be a small occurrence, so keep an eye on this one. Downside number four, low gear dependent. I'm not really going to deep dive on this one due to explaining this on other vehicle reviews, but in short, the FEM doesn't feel good in auto, in my opinion. Sometimes only some wheels can turn and the pace shows that action is required. There's two things you can do for this. One can potentially mitigate it and the other will solve the issue for sure. To mitigate this, just throw it in high gear. High gear almost forces the wheels to turn because diff lock is unavailable until you have low gears. However, when the low gears is actually in and differential locking is engaged, the truck feels great and its performance is wonderful. Other trucks that feel this way would be the CAT 745C, the Tatra Force, and also the Azov Antarctic. Downside number 5, fuel consumption and engine durability. Onto one of the most shocking discoveries on the downsides list. 
As we will learn, the Femme is second to none when it comes to torque, but that all comes at a heavy cost. The first is its fuel consumption, which was reduced on the PTS update, making it somewhat manageable. However, it can reach some of the highest values I've seen that rival drinkers like the 5600 TS and others. This is one where you might be inclined to switch over to the KZ GT engine at 260,000 torque to increase its range. Yes, it does have a roof rack, but trust me when I tell you, it only has 16 gallons or 60 liters more than the 5600 TS, and it's just as thirsty. Next one on which I won't elaborate too much, yet I believe is even more shocking than the first we talked about, is its engine durability. To quickly break this one down, after taking 33% of a 240 damage tolerance engine, which is 79 damage taken total, the consumption increases to 180% while retaining only 50% of its power. You might say, well, I'll just drive safe. However, keep in mind on long hauls, these small mistakes can quickly add up. And finally, coming in at downside number six, it's outperformed by its peers. We all know the FEM on test strips produced some of the best results even under loads and is unrivaled aside from the K7M. But with my pulling test with two separate tire sets, it failed to climb the test hill while the 605R slowly pulled the entire hill. On the British Columbia Special Mission trailer pull both, the 605R and the FEM made it solo, while the Dairy Special on stream did not. In a straight line mud strip, absolutely 100% yes, I will take the FEM all day. But the thing is, SnowRunner is a different story. And to be honest, its speed in game is very slow, and our number four downside comes into play quite a bit. Yes, its high saddle heights are very high, and its power as we know it is out of this world, but I think to hauling these trailers, there's more than that. However, in my opinion, I don't think it's the most maneuverable with those large trailers. On the other hand, keep in mind that the FEM can pull weight up the Season 10 ski slope, and no other truck in the game currently can do that fully loaded like the FEM 37AT. This was just meant to show some comparisons, but before we move on, I'll run the rest of this footage and then we'll talk about its good qualities. Well, as you can see, there are definitely some big red flags here, but trust me, the upsides are worth the wait. Here are the pros for the FEM 37AT. Coming in at upside number one, insane power, all wheel drive and differential locking. To be very brief here, the new number one spot for power has arrived with an engine that's stronger than the Dairy Special. Yes, at 288,000 torque, this has been the only truck to solo the ski slopes on British Columbia while being fully loaded on the truck and trailer as well. Adding in always on all wheel drive and switchable diff lock, this truck just powers through whatever you set it against. Upside number two, weight and stability. The 37AT makes an appearance as one of the heavier trucks in the game and pretty much all of its weight is set in its frame except for the 1000 kilograms in its cab. So the FEM is quite stable by the numbers. As we know, weight is great for massive tires, which we will touch on. But keep in mind, even though it is very stable, those things we listed in the downsides still apply. Upside number three, tires and performance. What more needs to be said? The combination of 71 inch super heavy tires, the vehicle's weight, and its insane power. No wonder why it's one of the best deep mud performers that we currently have in the game with and without cargo. And finally, coming in at upside number four, it's a cargo hauling specialist. Upon inspection of the FEM, in my opinion, I believe it has a shocking amount of add-ons for a heavy truck. 
After browsing its add-ons, we quickly realize it's a specialist when it comes to pulling cargo. As we've seen in the video, whether it's eight slots of cargo or a special mission trailer as well. It might not have the highest sitting saddle in the game currently, but it sure can pull them like no other, especially uphill. So in conclusion, as you can see, the Femme is meant to conquer SnowRunner. And in truth, if I may throw my opinion in there, I don't think we actually need it in the game, along with some other super heavies that can just do it all. Call me old school on this one, but I believe in the old class identities back in 2021 and 2020. Since the onset of these hawking do-it-all trucks entering the game, it kind of feels as if the other classes have been power crept. Yes, it is not a competitive game and we should not limit folks on what they can use. And I understand that massive trucks do help sell DLCs. The FEM is clearly one of the best vehicles in the game and it has taken that position by sheer force. Do I think it is the best? I believe those who watch the stream pretty much know my feelings on this subject. While I'm not one to simply throw around titles whenever the new truck comes out on PTS or even the onset of live server, I do have to say this truck is shockingly capable. However, this will be addressed on my upcoming tier list. So in closing, the Femme is a massive glass cannon. It has insane amounts of power, but it's at the cost that players need to decide if they are ready to pay for. Yet the good thing is, is that you do have other options as we noted in the video. So if you're ready to conquer the wilds of SnowRunner, try this one out and let me know what you think. And now let's take a quick look at the MTB 8106 Rock Grinder. If you've watched my 4x4 scout review that went over the smaller 4x4 scouts, we have to consider some things I listed on that video as well. Similar to that large review of those vehicles, I will quickly run through the data regarding the MTB and give you a brief review. So let's get started, shall we? The first piece of information regarding the MTB is it would be outfitted with a small scout engine at 58,000 torque. I also must mention it takes a while to get these upgrades that are scattered across North Carolina. Next, it's around the middle of the pack when it comes to tire size at 36 inches. It does get a nice crawler suspension to give it some flexibility and balance, but it's not like the Jeep Wranglers, nor does its balance hold the same. I believe that having one third of its weight in its cab takes away from its overall balance. Not only does it lean back on its rear wheels, but balance wise and driving at fast paces can be pretty dicey. So with all those things mentioned, it really just feels like another smaller Scout, similar to the Neo Falcon, but just a tad behind in off-road performance and a little heavier. Yes, it can tow trailers, but it is conditional based upon your spare wheel attachment and your bumpers as well. The ability to haul trailers is all right, but most Scouts kind of start to feel overwhelmed when they tow them. I believe the Scout class though as a whole have been much better since the release of the JAT tires along with the new season maps not being as tough. So in conclusion, I think it's very similar to most of the 4x4 Scouts that we already have in the game currently. One thing that did stand out though is it's always on all-wheel drive, which I believe forces the fuel consumption to be a tad higher, yet it does have a roof rack supplies that give it a good amount of fuel. Overall, in my humble opinion, it's just another 4x4 smaller Scout that just drops in there with the rest of them. I really hope this review gave you a fresh, new perspective of the FEM 37AT and the MTB 8106 Rock Grinder. Please smash that like button, share the video with someone who is currently struggling with the game, and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss any future content. Hope you all have a wonderful day, and as always, God bless and stay upright.